fall somewhere. Yeah. No, it, it was fake, so it's okay. Like, I mean, it was a capping. It fell down last week. I've done two talks without a suit. <laughs> I definitely want to ask this in towards the end as a Q&A. <laughs> but we'll keep going. <laughs> And I'm already seeing a lot of people join in. I am assuming if if you folks who have already joined in, if you know any designers, if you know any creators out there, tell them that this session is happening where Mehak is going to talk about a very interesting topic. The first time when she told me about uh, the session, I sort of did not understand, and I had to ask her, please elaborate more as to what we are going to learn in this. Uh, but I'm going to be here learning alongside <laughs> you all as well. uh before we get into this just want to know from people in the chat uh what defines best to you all as your role are you freelancers designers writers content creators uh marketers content managers like just just in one word put it in the chat as to what defines best to you guys what is like your role or designation or something like that just put it up in the chat okay freelancer content creator entrepreneur uh, creative entrepreneur writer youtuber video freelancer content creator writer okay super um here's also what we are going to do in this session people who have already joined this uh, throughout the conversation we will pick up five people uh basically we are going to pick up five questions from five different folks and if mehak selects any of your interesting questions we are going to give you an amazon voucher of rupees 1000 worth uh wow, it's wow so much pressure on me suddenly <laughs> <laughs> it's sponsored by our ticket tape partners uh, and these guys are really brilliant in what they do so all that everyone who has joined already in this session you have to do is listen to uh, the presentation and this conversation by mehak ask as in, as many interesting questions as you can and towards the end mehak will pick up five questions uh, and we'll make sure that we email you by tomorrow an amazon voucher gift card worth rupees 1000 does this excite everyone in the chat like can can you all just put up yes or no if if it doesn't excite you you can also put up no saying no 1000 rupees is not too much for me i don't care 1000 rupees uh, or i don't want to learn i don't want to intently listen you know we have to do this gimmicks because we want people to intently listen to a conversation because that shelf so is from amazon it's for 1000 rupees so if you like that you can get that if you <laughs> are <Super>. excited <laughs> super i i think you all already see mehex designation you already know her by the instagram name giggling monkey she has worked with some of the biggest brands in the country in the world so i'm not going to consume this time to do like an very traditional introduction but i i'm just going to tell you all that she is a very awesome person she is really really amazing very genuine and somebody that i really really admire uh, personally as well so i think that should be like a decent enough uh, yeah. introduction for each one of you and i'm not going to consume more time mehak over to you uh, and i'm i'm here in the chat i'm also seeing what people are putting up in the comments in the q and a tab please put your questions in the q and a tab and mehak will pick up five questions towards the end thank you so much you're so kind that was that was a beautiful introduction and uh, no bio is enough to keep up with that so that is really nice thank you so much <laughs> thank you i'm i'm going to disappear from this screen and but i'll be here in case you need me theek hai awesome all right hi guys how are you and good evening um is everybody joining from india or do we have people from around the world you can say where you're from and um i'm going to share my screen in the meanwhile um we have a very interesting um session today because uh this is something that i haven't spoken about till now as a conversation or like a talk uh, so far but uh, this is the first time i'm going to be talking about inspiration and ignored inspiration and working from working with people around the world uh sitting at home <laughs> so honestly i am getting my passport next month um but i have worked with people around the world so i'm going to share my experiences and my tips and um how to tap into inspiration that we see every day but we forget to acknowledge and um apply to our work so let's begin um this is a question that i just want to ask 
you all who are joining the chat what is inspiration really because uh, it means so many things it's not just something that would spark an idea to like make something but it could spark an idea to change your lifestyle or like change the way you're looking at the world uh, the kind of conversations you're having with people or even the kind of books you read or uh, you can get inspired by somebody to buy something <laughs> so like these things exist in so many various formats and um, i'm going to walk you through what inspiration is to me and why the topic is ignored inspiration because to be honest there are things around us that can inspire us to create or to even just be inspirational to other people and they're just around us hidden in small things in everyday activities and um to be honest this is something that i used to create my own work and not just design and art but also my environment and um my environment directly affects how i feel and uh what i create so my house this is my dining room and you can see the colors that i used around me in my work as well because these things really um are like my inspiration board so we will dive right into it and you guys can keep sending answers as to what inspiration is to you and you can still send this answer by the end of the chat and we will go through it i would love to go through that entire thing um so i have been i love reading and i think reading is one thing that really inspires me to not just um get ideas to do something or create but it makes me a better person and it opens up my uh, thought process to like uh, looking at the world from the perspective of other people because when you read something it's written by somebody who felt something at some point or uh, it's a mode of expression that somebody else had and how it sort of uh, presents to you a different perspective of the world and uh, bobby is the music producer for midsummer if you guys have seen that movie and i was reading this article on the creative independent and uh, this is what i really really think uh, kind of struck to me as what inspiration is because when you're young and young i mean like your kids because when we grow up we tend to um, filter out information make reasons out of things and um, make things make them smaller than the power that they actually have so um, look at the world around you and look at the possibilities that exist in like anything and everything that's there and make the most of it because i think we tend to put things into boxes very quickly when we grow up so that is our biggest mistake because something will probably help you define that box again so we're going to go over this um so this is exactly what i said you need to look and hear and read and feel and imagine more than anything else when you do all of these things they lead to imagination and when you imagine your brain is active you're able to think freely more uh, it's like you need to make your world bigger because we only think the world is as big as we know of it so like make your world bigger by educating yourself more and education doesn't necessarily mean that you need to uh get a degree or like go to do masters in somewhere outside the country because it's a prestigious college um of course that is one way of like educating yourself but make every day a new lesson for yourself read new things talk to people understand things behind certain pieces of art not just the end product because i feel like we chase end results so often in this time and age that we forget that someone derived there because they had a reasoning for something so that is what i would advise um i am mahesh malhotra and yes i lost my tooth recently that is me only <laughs> and i am a professional person who imagines because i don't really want to put myself into a role of doing something i'm just i'm a professional imaginator <laughs> um I run Giggling Monkey Studio. It's um uh, a studio that I started because I wanted to do something that didn't really fit into boxes that the world had defined. So this is my safe space that I want to expand to the rest of the world. And um 
yeah <laughs> um when i say ignored inspiration um it just basically comes from the places and things that are around us everywhere i travel everywhere i go even locally if you go for a walk um the picture with the glasses and that pink rasai in the background is actually it belongs to uh, the people who live under my house and then made uh, stitches these rasai out of old sarees and i saw that and i absolutely loved the colors and i took a picture because i wanted to like go back to it sometime to create something from that entire color combination the grid that's there then um i always i'm the person who doesn't delete pictures on my phone so i keep taking pictures of uh, random <laughs> candle packs at the supermarket uh red poison because i love the way that font is placed and i love the shadows that are falling in it's it's so it's it this is what intrigues me in the real world um i love that broken window because if you see the arch that shape is really interesting and uh it's it can be used for creating um maybe like the mold of a cake when you're baking it um that pattern that's the hand tooth pattern that is actually a chair in one of my friends house um and the rest of it is just uh you know interesting things so when i go to a supermarket i end up going to every single aisle to check out the packaging because i absolutely love it so it's basically going around to see uh, what's happening around the world so this is my bank of informal inspiration <laughs> um if you guys have been keeping up with the trends there's this red flag trend <laughs> so this is a huge red flag when we treat design that is a finished product as an inspiration so we just look at things that are already made say for example um i have a sanitizer spray around me so when you see the label you're like this is what can inspire you to do something no go back to the basics look at the things which have not been designed they just exist in nature in their true form they can inspire you so that is a red flag my friend <laughs> so um this is something that i find really important uh what can you do to inspire you because at the end of the day when we are creating things for other people to see we forget that it needs to stem from us it belongs to us and our art needs to represent who we are and our voice so i think it's very important to draft like a few steps as to how you can inspire yourself uh i'm going to take you guys through some steps that i follow and they're pretty mundane but maybe they can help you um this is super important you need to shake off the fear of failure now that we are living in a time and age where um every move we make is being watched every single thing we do is being watched because we document it and we put it on social media so we don't tend to learn new things or try new things because we have this fear of failure and i think everybody has this it's just um a very common feeling because i remember i just started baking cakes very like a year ago in lockdown and i wanted to learn it even further so i gave myself the time and space to make those errors learn from my mistakes and actually make perfect cakes and now i can ice them and decorate them and i do that for every friend's birthday now so the fear of failure really kind of holds us back from doing things it stops us from getting inspired by our own mistakes so shake that fear off <laughs> um now that we take stories and pictures and everything and just keep posting them everywhere i think we're documenting our environment to show other people what we're doing where we are and what really is around us i think we forget that uh, sometimes taking pictures needs to go in the your gallery so that you can come back to it and learn from it so i think this is my uh, go to thing i have 56000 pictures in my gallery which are just full of product packaging uh, <laughs> uh probably like street art uh sunsets and uh lots of my friends um and signboards i love signboards so yeah that is what i absolutely do so document for yourself not for the world 
but you can always um, you know curate and share your inspiration with the world <laughs> um avoid information and inspiration overload when everything around us is interesting we tend to get our mind tends to get split into 100 things so you need to understand what are the things that truly inspire you or the craft ideas in your head and you need to focus on that because um there are so many things that you can focus on so i think the more you divide your attention the more you tend to miss out on uh, the qualities of one single thing so multitasking is great but like maybe more than 15 to 20 things in a week that are new and that inspire you could be too much and your brain also needs a break so constant inspiration could lead to burnout so don't uh, overdo it just like take breaks and appreciate and stop and smell the roses it's so important um translate the inspiration you document into your own language it doesn't mean that uh you make something from english to hindi <laughs> or like something else but um what you can do is essentially look at art that exists or you can go to a museum for example and what you can do is um look at the things around you and why they made sense historically what was there at a certain time in a certain place where things were made what inspired those things come back home understand what are those things that you understood from that in that experience and translate it to this time is when you make art which is inspired by the process which is being done in the past you can make something that's relevant to now and um, also it stays true to you so inspiration doesn't mean um taking something from somewhere and making it in a different medium it means that you understand and then you translate to your own language so that is what essentially inspiration is for me um this is something that i feel all of us <laughs> as designers and creators always feel that everything that we make needs to solve a problem and i feel this is the biggest problem because uh, we forget that making something should be about the process of learning instead of you seeing the end product and that making sense for the entire world so sometimes you have to make things not to solve a problem but to understand an entire way to reach the end of the map so yeah stop overthinking <laughs> um now that we are done with inspiration i want you to know how to work with people around the world it's uh, super i won't say it's easy but it's something that we are all capable of and uh, i think we just need to tap into that and understand what are the ways of doing this and if you are doing this there is a etiquette that you need to follow because people from around the world would be in different time zones and uh, you would be have to be flexible in order to work with them so let's dive into this <laughs> um this is what i thought when i started and uh, i think that uh this is what i kind of worked back from because i realized that if i keep feeling that people can't see my work they can't find me anywhere then nobody's going to give me work or i think this is one major thing that holds everyone back from like cold <laughs> calling cold emailing and you know just sending out your work out into the world and i feel like now that we have the mediums to interact with people from around the world and not really need a passport to go outside to work with someone i mean you need a passport to go out physically but you can work online with anyone um so i thought that but then i realized that every time somebody would look for something it needs to drive back to you so seo <laughs> is your best friend so whenever you put your work on your website on any uh, press article that goes out or even your social media make sure that the alternate text that you add to it uh leads back to you so like 
when you're uploading a picture to your website, don't call it IMG3. Call it what it is and tag it with your name and it will show up on Google search. And uh, this really helps you track back from what this art, who this art belongs to and how somebody can reach that. Um, then, uh, <laughs> this is something that's very cool because like, uh, <laughs> what is really interesting here is that uh, this is a game that I still play as a grown up person. And I love playing this because like there is, you have to find Waldo in that entire crowd. But uh, so the entire purpose of this picture is to understand that even if people are, there are so many people around someone and if somebody is looking for you, they will find you. Because their purpose is to find someone who fits their bill. So like, don't worry. And don't think that you're lost because so, there's so many people in the picture. If someone is looking for your work and they're looking to work with you, they will find you. Um, every time I send someone my email ID because I got someone to help me with my SEO, this is what pops up. And it's important that people can go back to something that would give them more information about what you do and how you do it. And uh, this is how you find Waldo. <laughs> um, now, a very, uh, I grew up watching Disney and a very wise person in a very wise show once said that life's what you make it, so let's make it rock. So honestly, if you want people to find you, make sure your SEO is strong and you're present, you're online and uh, we're available to be contacted because we make LinkedIn profiles, we make profiles on different platforms, and then we forget our passwords and they just exist out there. So when you have made an account somewhere, make sure you check your messages, make sure you check who's trying to get in touch with you and tap into that network. <laughs> mm, like I said, if clients want to find you for the work you do, they will find you. And uh, to be honest, a lot of my work that I've gotten professionally that is paying me is coming from all the fun work that I have created, um, which I did tapping into ignore inspiration and putting it together for someone to find me in a huge crowd because I know that there are people who are looking for the kind of work you create. As long as you know, you can back your work up with what you stand for as an artist, as a designer and as a creator. Um, this is an example that I would like to share. The left side of the screen, the ones with the lot, the lots of vinyl covers, is uh, a personal project. I started making album covers with the letter, the 36 days of type. I did a song a day, so I made that into <laughs> an album cover, a vinyl cover per day. And while I was doing this, it landed me a project with Avanti and her team to make the album artwork for her new uh, EP that's come out. It's called Double Standard. And um, this was while I was doing that personal project. So it's very important to put the work that you want to create to get paid for out there so that people know that you're capable of creating that and make that personal work with quality and finesse because it needs to look professional so that someone can trust you with their work because that music needs to be backed up by something that is gonna you know, match up with the aesthetics of things. So this is just a real world example. Um, this is all the work I've created for fun and much more actually. And I realized that all the work that I create kind of stems from putting across a message and it's never really, um, <laughs> I would say, just for like putting something out there. So I like, I think I have a lot to say, but I use this medium in various ways to like put across my messages. And Koi to Meri Baat Suno is basically like <laughs> somebody, like I send that to someone who didn't clear my bill for like a year. So <laughs> it's just how you put your messages across. So I made a mixtape uh, and I sent it across. <laughs> now, when you're working with people, not just around the world in general, when you're professionally working with people, it's super, super important to follow etiquette because this is something um, that we kind of lose track on on the way of creating a brand that 
when people get in touch and they're expecting work from you make sure that you're professional you follow deadlines you have a brief everything is on emails there are contracts and ndas and all of that in place because it's so important to protect your work protect the client and also put across like a method of working because design can get disorganized the more you're able to put things into place with like a track and a plan the better your output can be so these are a few ways um very very honestly i think timing is everything and uh right place right time right time zone <laughs> all of those things matter a lot so when you are creating anything make sure that if someone gets in touch with you the timing of that entire thing is right to so check your messages check your linkedin very regularly it's so important i don't like the importance of it last year <laughs> um timing is everything because you need to be flexible with the work that you create and the timing because your time zones can be different and timing of promise deliverables because dates can be different it could be a one like a day earlier or a day later so make sure you stick to those things um i tried making a meme it's not a meme really it's like <laughs> a collection of information so So I took the poster for keeping up with the Kardashians, and I put together things that you need to keep up with when you're working with international timelines and international clients. And um, this also applies to working with Indian clients or like people who you know locally. Um, time zones. You might have to wake up super early or take calls post working hours if you're working with someone who's not in the same time zone. So flexibility is super super important. Languages. English is universally spoken but people can have accents so make sure that you ask questions but are respectful of that entire conversation so um this could be a tricky one so when you're working with people make sure that you're kind you're present and you are a delight to talk to because the easier you are to talk to the easier the process of working with someone can get very important printers <laughs> this is the toughest one because when you're designing for an international client you've not worked with people who are printers outside of the country for example they're working with somebody from canada so the kind of color systems they would follow the kind of formats they would require are different because people here would work differently versus outside so trying to figure out the technicalities putting that plan in place putting that um, method of working and a flow of communication is super important um local regulations this is also important because if you're working on food products or like food packaging from not the indian uh, like from our country you need to understand that some packaging would require you to put two languages in the same place so the real estate in that packaging could go really far so your design needs to solve that problem make sure that all the nutrition facts and everything is up to date and the local regulations that the client is working with approves it so you work with them in order to deliver something that would be functional in that country um cultural context this is very important because what is funny to us here might not be funny to someone outside and what's funny to someone outside might not be funny to us so um avoid uh, making something that would hurt someone's sentiments uh so make sure that those questions are asked that in that context is laid and that's how you understand what are the boundaries you can work with logistics um have been collaborating with people outside and sometimes you have to send things outside after making them prints and like clothes and things like that so it's super important to understand how long it will take for something to reach somewhere so your timelines are planned around that um what are the taxes that will have to be paid what are the duties that will have to be paid what is allowed to be sent outside to which country and what is allowed to be received in india so it's very important because sometimes when you're working with say for example a spice brand they can't send something to another country because the customs won't let it so you have to work with them to understand how you can overcome that barrier um logistics also includes fees of uh, like for example you're charging somebody 100 dollars for a service but uh, remember that there's going to be conversion charge on that and you have to account for that and also conversion rate differ 
so that you also need to get someone on board who is going to take care of that so as a creative i would suggest hiring experts who take care of these things and otherwise when are you going to be doing your thing <laughs> that's very important so this is probably not a meme but like a guide and i just used the kardashians to explain a very complex uh <laughs> way of working so thank you <laughs> thanks kim <laughs> um planning projects uh this is going to help you sail smoothly uh no matter where you're working with who you're working having a timeline in place having a plan in place and keeping everyone in the loop informed how to do things um i just realized i'm wearing the same blue in the illustration so <laughs> have a process it's super important that the client that you're working with knows how you work what are the timelines what are the milestones when they can expect a draft when they can expect a call to give feedback and how things are going to fall into place so it might take 10 calls it might take 15 calls but that is important because you're not working for someone you're working with someone so this is really really like important time zones always remember ist to est or like pacific timing everything is different so what time we are you know we, it might be night for us for somebody it might be early morning so for some time zones you can't literally work with them because of the gap in time or have calls with them but uh email is your best friend <laughs> and this is the point i said emails are a record of everything make sure you're keeping notes from meetings make sure you're accounting for everything that is being spoken about doesn't matter if it's an international client or an indian client this is something that's going to keep everything in place avoid whatsapp because um whatsapp chats mean instant feedback and instant feedback often comes from a place of a reaction rather than a feedback so you want someone to think about something and then give you feedback rather than giving you a reaction so that's how we function we try to avoid getting feedback over whatsapp because that doesn't come from a place of giving it enough time for the design to sink in and giving like a reply to it so please uh as creators this is a good industry practice feedback should be on email unless you're working with really tight deadlines and make sure that everyone on that entire thread is in touch with each other uh <laughs> this is very important make sure when you're writing an email to someone you spell their name right this is something that happens to the best of us sometimes for me also so many times people have misspelled my hex even though my email has my right spelling um it's someone called meher or mahesh <laughs> and i lots of other names that i didn't know i could be called but uh draft emails go through them think about what you've written and just like send them out with a proofread don't send emails that have not been read properly it doesn't look good on you on your company or even as like a professional um <laughs> um this is my advice to all the creatives that are newbies that are starting out if there is somebody who inspires you look at what inspires you about them don't try to shadow someone's work because everybody's um environment context of growing up cultural upbringing everything is different so like what's unique to you could hi- could be highlighted better if you just paid attention to it if someone inspires you look at the routine they follow look at how they approach work and what they do and learn from it and apply it to your life you don't have to make something that looks like something you can always make things from a place which is understood from the process that somebody else follows and every project we work with a new client we know new things on how we can either improve improve our process of working with someone or just like they know how to work with a designer so like it's a collaborative process make people understand how you work and learn how they work and always try to make the things that would reflect you and your work mm-hmm. most important <laughs> this is something for everyone you are not your work you make your work so please stop taking things so personally 
and uh, try to take that step back from you and your work and your self worth with your work because i think we're just all being really hard on ourselves in general because everything is being watched by people and everything is being deciphered by people so make sure that you step away moment to moment to understand that you are not your work you're a person who's capable of so much and probably you don't know new things yet that could you know help you express better so this is my final take away from this and <laughs> love you too <laughs> take care and thank you so much everyone <laughs> I think Pawan, you can hop in back. Super. Uh, I'm back. But do you want to do your Q and A now, or uh, like, like, do you want to go to the Q and A tab and pick up the five questions? Yes, I'm just gonna. how to become a creative director one second i'm just going to read ek bar everything so there are nice questions how to share work and ask clients for a collab what's your process um this is a good question should i upvote it or should i answer it <laughs> what's the process you show it on the stage like just click on show okay. on stage one sec um i'm not able to do that how can i do that just tell me which uh, question you want to pick up and then i will just uh, enlarge it on the stage it's by which okay. person one sec it's by uddesh kumar from bangalore How many questions did people send? <laughs> I'm still scrolling. <laughs> I think there are like ten questions or like eleven plus questions. Okay, <laughs> I I need some time to. Oh, I need my specs also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, every time I am able to read something, it just goes down or up. I'm how do i avoid fear of being judged by everyone out there who could be smarter than us and from where we where where can we learn seo efficiently you i you might would... you might be seeing a, a show on stage tab also right below every question or you no, cannot no i'm not getting that i'm so sorry Should I send this on the chat to you, or should I just read out the question loudly, or should I just? Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, how to avoid the fear of ju- being judged by everyone out there who could be smarter than us? Um, and for the last bit of the question, I would suggest that you get someone who is an expert because even I didn't do it on my own. I got someone who was an expert, and like I am good at my job with being a designer. There are people good at their job at helping you with SEO. You don't have to do everything on your own. That's the beauty of living in the world right now. <laughs> There are experts for things you want to get them to help you out for. Fear of being judged by everyone. I think that is everybody has that fear, and I think we should let go of that because you are only as smart as the things you know, and everybody's idea of smart is different. So I think make the things you make, but back them up with reasoning. I think. that is very very important research and reasoning make your work smart take care of that end and everybody is going to understand where you're standing and anybody who judges you probably is judging you because they had a similar idea they could execute it <laughs> i just look at it from that perspective um uh I'm curious to know how do you how you approached landed your first desi- first client as a newbie in the design world. This is by Shruti Verma from Nift. Yeah, Nift represents. <laughs> again, I, I'm just going to ask you if we can. Uh, can you de- repeat me the name again? 
it's driti varma one sec i'm going to i i swear to god i can't see that share on screen <laughs> okay why 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 is this so difficult these are not so many questions right oh driti i got it <laughs> is the question yes um my first professional project that i got was i did animation and helped with the set design for a music video for when chai met toast it was called fight and i got that work because i was putting up what i had fun doing on instagram and the brief was uh, ganesh raj is the director who messaged me on instagram saying hey can you make the music video look like your feed and that was the <laughs> beginning of understanding how powerful what you personally would create can you know resonate with the work that you get as a professional and it honestly started there and uh, that's how i put together a personal portfolio that landed me professional jobs um is which next question should we take any recommendations for clients working with designers and other creative professionals by apur I, mean, i know apur <laughs> we branded their coffee brand the simple brew uh, last month i think it's live now um so i'm sorry someone's on the door so i'm just going to turn a little bit said um i feel like the first step of working with a creative is to understand the steps that are required to create something because i feel like a lot of times uh, design is a mystery to a lot of people who don't practice it so i think understanding uh, asking your designer how they work what are the processes that they work with um and what are the timelines and everything that they work with is super super important it was a delight working with apoor because they uh we asked the right questions they gave us the right answers and their feedback was always on point so i think for clients it's super important for clients to give um directional feedback so like everyone who's watching if you are somebody who is working with a creative giving feedback where you tell them that okay this is not fun enough or like this is not um uh, going to it's just not working tell them why it's not working because that helps the creative god bless you uh take the right direction and like put it together so i feel like in time when you're working with creatives you'll understand what helps them and guides them to the right direction that you're expecting as a client and um giving directional feedback that is the best thing to do so yeah and so nice to see you here at home <laughs> what is next that we can uh, pick up what are the important what are the co- important component components to be more creative and productive in work by the way it's a super duper nice oh thank you um more creative and more productive i think it depends on how you define what is more creative and more productive everybody has 24 hours in a day and um i just somebody said that the early bird gets the worm and like the night owl something somebody said working all the time is the way to be productive and i feel like that's absolutely wrong make sure that you're working in the time that you're most active in you're most creative in um you're most productive in so like define your working hours on your own and but <laughs> answer calls and emails if someone calls you working hours where you are but uh, it's important to take breaks a break should not feel like a luxury it should feel like something that happens regularly because if you take breaks as a luxury then your work is going to feel like it's going to drag you down so make sure that you stop and smell the roses <laughs> i think that's a very important point that we should not look at breaks as a luxury it should be like a regular and uh, otherwise the work actually becomes like i am not i <laughs> not be the one who should be saying all of this i should be the one i know you work all the time <laughs> yeah i know i sh- I'm, i'm like a work colleague so i need to learn this <laughs> but what i'm trying to say is everybody I think who's last year is when i actually understood the importance of that phase to stop and smell the roses because um this year i've been trying to grow basil and like thyme and all of these things in the house and i understood the amount of effort it takes to grow these things to appreciate them i think everyone should garden a little bit to understand the 
process of growth because you need to see that how it would reflect on you as a person because we also need care energy time and effort and love to grow so make sure you have these things so that you can be more productive because there is a thing called maslow's needs hierarchy so you can't be here if you are not here so make sure you are here first with all the things that you need and then you move forward yeah i think we can take one <laughs> more question right we we have taken four i yeah, think we... i have i'm not so sure but maybe <laughs> Uh, I can take two to um, remember, guys. In the chat, just can you just tell how many have we taken? Please don't say zero, just because we need. <laughs> uh, but actually, is or is it four? I I just want to be sure of it. Um, okay. The next question that we can take from here is ideal email pitch while pitching your work creatives to a client. Clients are looking for experienced candidates and times. How do you still pitch your content and get? that talking phase with the client this is a this is a very important question and i think that um, a lot of us fall back from like uh, you know asking this question and like putting across like briefs and things one thing that everybody here he needs to really 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 do stop free pitching that is so important because everybody is going to expect free pitches free ideas before they even sign you on for a project so as a creative community we all need to stand up for this and stop pitching ideas for free because you need to have so what the guide to actually doing this and avoiding that phase of like getting ghosted by people and all those things is that your portfolio or uh, you need to put together a, like my website is like we're updating it to like the next level so while it's on a coming soon page on the home page you make sure you have a pdf that is on your google drive it's available to everybody who has the link so you share that link with the client you categorize the work into uh, what brands you worked with what was the project what was the problem what you did so like make your top 10 projects on that if you're starting out make dummy projects and write that they are you know projects that have been imagined and there's nothing wrong in that you just have to make sure that somebody understands that this is not actually implemented but this is like a you know a design solution that you're offering or design that you saw like one really interesting thing that we see in the portfolios we get at the studio is that a lot of people redesign the starbucks logo because i feel like everyone hates it so nobody is actually changing the starbucks logo physically in the real world but i think that it's very important to do projects which would show that how your thought process works how you would approach a problem and how um, you would solve that entire issue that is there now an ideal email pitch needs to be crisp it needs to be uh, it shouldn't be beating around the bush because no one has the time to like read a full you know katha and then go to the conclusion and understand what is the idea about i would say the first slide of the deck that you're creating or like um, the paid pitch that you're working on needs to talk about um, how somebody needs to get hooked on to the rest of the presentation that you've made so you need to have a uh, i won't say elevator pitch but like two lines that make sure that the client is intrigued to read the rest of the pitch so it's a summary or it's like um it's like a trailer so like you know you wait for the movie to come so i think that is uh, what you could do and if people are looking for experienced like experienced candidates just ask them if they are flexible with that if they are not there's no point going ahead and wasting your own time to it but you need to uh, maybe they have a certain restriction because certain companies have job profiles that can only be filled out by a certain years of experience so you need to make sure that when you have completed those years of experience you can you know apply back but uh, if the client is flexible then go ahead and make sure that they know that you're worth the job that you're applying for and fight for it go for it i think there is in no mountain high enough <laughs> so super i think uh, people are still putting up the questions but folks sadly uh, we'll have to end the session because we have crossed like 10 15 minutes beyond the time that we had uh, so sorry about this but what <laughs> <laughs> i think we've gone 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. uh, that's okay but so sorry guys, 
we have learned something new and we have talked about something new and i have got one more reminder about uh, please don't be like a workaholic and take some breaks i think uh, i am good about extending it uh, 20 minutes what we can do is if <laughs> your questions are still not addressed um please just tag mehak on ig stories or twitter linkedin yeah. wherever you guys are active uh just make sure that you, you can dm that. me on instagram i'm most active on instagram linkedin i check once a week it's important but you have to check it once a week <laughs> anyway just but thank you so here. much everyone who joined and thank you so much pawan it means a lot to be here and talk to so many people and put these ideas across and uh, as a creative community we all need to stick together because like mm-hmm. um, the more we all believe in something that could work out as a better etiquette or like a better working environment everybody will follow it will be an easier world to work in so my insta id is giggling monkey if you haven't guessed it because of the way amount of times i've laughed in the talk <laughs> No, I'm I'm very sure people uh, uh, know you here. But what we'll also do is we'll just uh, put uh, the link also of your Instagram account here in the chat, and people can then check it out. Give me a second till I do this. Uh, but any closing thoughts before we end this session? Mehak, anything that you want to? I would say. Or- I would say take a break, guys. All of us deserve it, and. Uh- I think because we've all been working from home, we've forgotten working hours, and it's gone beyond nine to five. And uh, lunch break come at four o'clock. I don't think that's good for you. I I experienced one month of that because everybody was working like that, and we just took a step back and we were like, "I'm sorry, we're not doing this because everyone's doing this because it's bad for your health. You're gonna age faster. If you're gonna age faster, how are you gonna make art?" <laughs> That's a good motivation. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you everyone who yeah, joined. Yeah, the more you take care of yourself, the longer you live, the more art you make. <laughs> that's that's actually a good motivation to have. But yes, uh thank you so much everyone who joined in for the session and asked some brilliant questions. People who have asked the questions, uh we will email you, so don't worry about that. Uh you will get your Amazon gift vouchers. We will not uh you know deny on that. So we will send it to you over your email. and thank you so much mike for doing this thank i you. know uh, we were trying to schedule it some way and seeing this happen <laughs> was really 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 made me a lot of happy no i'm so happy to be here thank you so much for so, all the love and all the attention that i got today from all the people that heard me talk about inspiration <laughs> thank you guys have a good weekend thank bye. you guys bye bye bye